Hi, Kathy. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you, Catherine? I am doing well. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Grace Cafe as we are letting people get notifications that we've actually gone live. Uh, for those of you who are already here, I am Catherine Barner, your host for the day, and I have another great guest with me, my good friend, Miss Kathy Green, who is joining us uh, from the Dallas, Texas area. How, how are things in Dallas today, Kathy? Wonderful. Good. It is going to be a high of 91 degrees today, so I already went out and did my walk, and I'm, I'm happy about the sunshine that I see out my, outside of my window. <laughs> yes, yes, the same thing is happening here in Houston, so, so I am excited as well. I was telling uh, someone before we came live that it was winter last week, but it's summer this week, so... Uh, but you know that's that's how God does with His weather. So um, right. everyone, if you have if you've joined us and as you're coming on, I see folks. We've got people coming on online. If you would go ahead and please share this uh, with your friends on Facebook, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share with my audience, Kathy, if you want to do the same, so folks know that we are on, uh, that we are live, we are getting ready for uh, a really great conversation as we always have here on the Grace Cafe. Uh, again, I am excited to be hosting this on today. Uh, for those of you who have been joining us since, I believe, January, when we first kicked this off, we say thank you uh, so very much for doing that. We're excited about what's happening uh, at Grace School of Theology and certainly with the new Grace Center for Spiritual Development. And this is just another uh, piece of that puzzle where we are interviewing just some wonderful folks each and every week. Um, so again, we say thank you for that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm going to share this really quickly as soon as I can find it on my phone. I'm gonna share it. There we go. Um, and like I said, Kathy, if you want to do the same, and we'll let folks know that we are live and in living color here on Facebook. I see that we've got a a few folks that have joined us. I think Daniel is watching. Good to see you, Daniel. All right. Well, as we continue to do that, um, and just again, we, this is just a really casual conversation that, that we have each and every week uh, here on the Grace Cafe with uh, different individuals um, that Mark and Carmen and I, all three of us who, who are the hosts here, really enjoy spending time with and uh, getting to share them with you. Uh, a lot of these people we know personally. But this is an opportunity uh, for you to get to know them as well. So we're really excited about that, really excited about um, you learning more about what's happening in the kingdom through God's people uh, and how he is demonstrating his grace uh, through those people each and every day. So so we're going to go ahead and jump right in. As I said, my name is Catherine Barner. I, Barner, I can't say my own name today. My name is Catherine Barner, and I am hosting the Grace Cafe today, and I have here uh, someone who I really do consider uh, a dear, dear friend. Uh, she's been a friend to me for, um, it's probably been a, a couple of years now, two, three years now, I can't remember, yes. uh, that we have been connected and our friendship has just grown. She's an incredible woman of God, um, means the world to me. Um, so I'm really excited to have her here. Her name is Kathy Green, and I'm going to share just a short bit of her bio. Uh, Kathy is, she's a conference speaker uh, and teacher on the subject of prayer. Uh, Kathy has authored a total of three three books at this point, and we're going to get a chance to talk about those, certainly going to talk about two of those. We may get to the third one, um, but I am just really excited to introduce to all of you my good friend, Miss Kathy R. Green. Hello. How are you? So happy Hello to be there. here with you today, Catherine. I've been looking forward to this time. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been looking forward to this one as well, so I'm really glad that you were available and we could make this happen on today. So um, as I said in, in your bio, Kathy, you are, you are a prayer. Um, you are a woman of prayer, and I know that you speak and you teach uh, on prayer all the time. Um, and your, it was actually your second book um, that you published. It was entitled Prayers Bear Fruit, uh, Becoming a Woman of Prayer. So I want to if you would, before we get started, because I want to jump into your latest book and then we'll then we'll probably back up. But I do want to talk about where this whole um, I'll call this passion for prayer came from and, and how that became really what I'll call just your seat in ministry. 
Wow, you know what? I was just telling my daughter in love just yesterday about how my prayer journey started. And I remember my dad being a mighty man of prayer as well as my grandmother, my maternal grandmother. And I, as a little girl, would sit at her feet and listen to her pray. And I was absolutely fascinated by the way that she connected with God. And so when I gave my heart to the Lord at the age of 10, I really felt the Lord drawing me into a quiet place just to sit and talk with him. And I had a little diary with a key on it and I had um, my Bible and I just wanted to spend time with God. That was my safe place. It was my place of security. And that's really where my prayer life started. But then, you know, a few years or, or I'm going to say 15 years into my marriage, the Lord actually called me to teach his people how to pray. But that mm -hmm. came after walking through many valleys and going through many tests and trials. And I had much pra practice or exercise with <laughs> prayer before he said, now I want you to teach my people how to pray. So that's yeah. kind of where it started. Wonderful. And and you mentioned something there. And I think that's that's a great segue um, to where I, where I actually want to start. You talked about walking through those valleys um, and your latest book is entitled Meet Me in the Valley, um, Walking with God Through the Low Places in Life. And we know that um, as Christians, as believers, that that does not exempt us uh, from those low places. That doesn't exempt us from those valleys in life. And uh, sometimes I think we can get a little bit off track because we sometimes assume that because we are living for God and reading his word and doing all the things that we're supposed to do, that we shouldn't have, excuse me, have those valleys. But that is not the truth. And so talk about, I want you to talk about um, some of the valleys that you encountered. And then I want you to, to talk about this new book and this new project and why it was so important for you to get this particular word out. Okay, well, one of my, my gifts is the gift of encouragement. And we all know that we all face valleys. We all go through challenges, whether we've lost a loved one or maybe we've gone through a divorce. Maybe we've gotten a diagnosis from a doctor that is not good, whatever it is, or maybe we have children uh, incarcerated, whatever the situation, we all walk through valleys. And so this book actually has several valleys that I walk through. And then I also highlighted a few other people who have gone through valleys. And it offers a lot of hope because mm -hmm. when you're in that low place and, and it seems like you're in isolation, it's a dark time, you're confused, you don't understand why you're there, what, God, what, what is God doing, where is he? I wanted to offer mm. hope to people going through a valley, just to let all of us know as we walk through that valley, God is in it with us. He's right there to talk with us, to lead us through, to reveal things to us that we need to know about him and about ourselves. And so, um, my first valley that I walked through was when I was 18 years old, just two weeks after my high school graduation. My senior year was spent really in sorrow because my father had been diagnosed with cancer and I watched him wither away. And so yeah. two weeks after the graduation, he did pass away. And I found, found myself in a dark valley because I was at a crossroads as an 18 year old girl where I should have been excited. I'm finally out of high school. And yes. then I thought, okay, what am I gonna do with my life now? I'm free. I should have been so thrilled to pursue, you know, my dreams, but I, I mm. found myself struggling with now what, what am I gonna do? And I really wanted to give up. I didn't wanna go to college. I didn't want to do anything that I had planned to do. I just wanted to really live in sorrow and just cry every day. So that was really my first experience with, uh, with walking through a valley. Wow, and you know, and you said something in there, uh, you know, you said, I, I just wanted to give up, you know, and I think a lot of us, when we hit those, those low places, you know, we, when we run into those walls, that a lot of times, because it, it, the pain is real. And as you mentioned, particularly for you as an 18 year old girl, I mean, life is, this is when life is really right. getting started and it's supposed to be good. Um, and so talk about Kathy, what, what do we do, you know, in, in those times when, when those valleys do come at whatever point in our life they may come, 
and we do feel like wanting to give up because I think sometimes um, we we shy away from saying that out loud because we mm -hmm. feel like I shouldn't feel this way. Um, but but it's it's a it's a real part of the struggle. And so what is what do we do um, to move through the valley when when we sometimes really do just want to lay down and say, you know what, I'm tired. Yeah. You know, I feel that it's there are practical things we can do, and then there are also spiritual things we can do. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully, whoever you are out there that's going through a valley, if you have a relationship with God, that is the time when you should draw closer to him than ever before. Learning how to be transparent in his presence. Get real. If you're angry, tell him. If you want to give up, say, God, I, I feel like giving up. We can talk to him just like you and I are having a conversation. And yeah. so that's that's what really uh, helped me through Life's Valleys is my relationship with God and being able to just talk to him and run to him, let those tears flow, scream out if we have to. On a practical note, it, it's so important to have someone to talk to, yeah. you know, because a lot of times we can be in isolation and we don't want anybody to know how low we are how hurt we are, how confused we may feel. But even yeah. like yourself being, you know, a Christian counselor, I, I encourage people, talk to someone. If you don't have a friend, if you don't have a family member, get counseling. Go in and get some help and, and learn how to walk through that with some practical tools and tips, as well as clinical or spiritual things. Yeah, that is yeah. so good, and I, and I'm glad you you brought that up. You know, a couple of things. I'm 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 glad that you answered the way you did. You know, with respect to the spiritual things that we can do, but also those practical things. You know, and spiritually, I, I love what you said about being transparent with God, because it's not like He doesn't know anyway. <laughs> you right. know how we're feeling or what we're feeling. You know, or that we're angry with Him, or you know That's we cool. don't want to talk. He already knows. And so I do love it because even in that, we're st he's still getting us to come to him. And ultimately, he is the one who's going to do the healing. So I love that, just that picture of being transparent with God. And then also, I, I do, obviously, you know, I wholeheartedly agree with you with the practical side of having someone to talk to and walk you through. Because sometimes there are some very practical things that when we are in the midst of it, we just can't see. Um, we're not able to understand it, what the next step is, as simple as it may be for someone else, um, because we're just in the middle of it. Um, there's something, I, and I think I, I sent you a text message when I received your book, because, um, and I think I told you this, I was ordering it just because I was supporting my friend, but it was very interesting. A few days later, I found myself in the midst of a valley that I had no idea of, like, what is going on? So I think I sent you a text from the balcony where I was just crying one day going, what is happening to me? Um, but your book was so refreshing. I, again, I started reading it just because I'm supporting my friend's book, but there was so much in here. And one of the things that, that struck me literally in the introduction, I think I may have sent this to you as well. Okay. It's still on the first page of the introduction. So for <laughs> those of you who are watching, um, if you haven't had an opportunity to, to get Kathy's book, you can go to her website at kathyrgreen.com. Um, and the book is available there. It's entitled Meet Me in the Valley, Walking with God Through the Low Places in Life. But I want to share just this little nugget um, that's found on the very first page of the introduction, people. Um, and it says, as much as we would rather avoid the kind of circumstances that take us to a low place, these experiences are essential for our spiritual growth and development. They prepare us for the work to which we are called. So I literally read that, I closed the book and I put it down because I thought, okay, if this is, if she has like just wiped me out on the first page of the introduction, <laughs> this book is going to be amazing. And again, that was when I was just reading as a supportive friend. So by the time I got to this val unexpected valley and got really into the meat of the book, it was amazing. So I want you to talk mm -hmm. about, a little bit about just that when, you know, how these valleys, how how do they prepare us for what, what it is that God wants us to do? You know, um, wow. I feel that every valley we go through has a purpose, a divine purpose. And if you can discover what is it that God is trying to teach me in this place that I'm in, what is it that he wants me to know? 
And so again, humbling yourself, going before God every day, even if it's 10 or 20 times a day, however often you need to have a conversation with God, do it. Go to the park and sit in your car like I've done many days. Go somewhere quiet where it's just you and God. Go for a walk and talk to God while you're walking. And, and just ask him, Lord, what do you want me to know? What is the lesson that you're trying to teach me in this season of my life? I'm hurting and I don't understand. I'm confused and I don't know why you being a loving God would allow me to go through this. And so I discovered um, in, in the main valley story that I share in this book about what happened when I being called to teach the body of Christ how to pray, uh, discovered that I had a large mass on my thyroid after a few months went in to have that removed. First time I tried to talk when the doctor said, how are you feeling? She was explaining how intense the surgery was. I went to talk and my voice, it sounded like I had a horrible case of laryngitis. Now to just shorten that story, I was diagnosed with a paralyzed vocal cord. So the right side of my vocal cord was not moving and the left side was the only side moving. And so I'm thinking, Lord, what's going on here? You called me to teach people how to pray and I don't have a voice. I, I'm, I'm an author and I'm a speaker. Women are inviting me to be a keynote speaker at a women's conference and all of this and pray at a prayer breakfast. And yet they're, even with a microphone, people could barely hear me. And so I was in a valley, but the Lord wanted to purge me of some things. He wanted to show me some things that were going on on the inside. And so I had to learn that this ministry of prayer, even if it's a person that's watching today or if it's myself, our prayers are directed to God, first of all. We're not praying for the glory of man or to sound like we're so powerful, so spiritual, or we have the ability to pray with just such zeal. That's mm. not it at all. God is wanting to connect with our hearts. He wants humility, transparency. He wants a pure heart to come before him. And so all of that had to be dealt with in me because I was on all these prayer conference calls and I was saying, Lord, nobody can hear me as I pray. He said, well, who are you praying to anyway? Wow. So wow. I had to discover it had nothing to do with me. It was all about him and what he wanted me to pray. And he taught me so much about myself. He taught me so much about him in that four year valley. So it was actually four years until my voice was restored. Yeah. And that I'm, happened I'm supernaturally. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's, that's where I was headed because I, I know that story. Um, of you again, it's it, it being called to teach and pray for this ministry. And you're like, how am I supposed to do this? I have no voice. But it, it takes being able to to get to that place of what you just said of of answering the hard question when God says, but who are you praying to? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and having that that real transparent moment of. Am, am I not really doing this the way I'm supposed to be for God right. and being or honest with the about right that. motive with the right? Yeah, with the right motive. Exactly. Right. And the right heart um, and knowing that he's got to work some stuff out in us because we don't like to do that. Um, right. But I, I, I love that. And talk about you mentioned that it was a four year journey mm -hmm. uh, that you went through um, before you were able to speak the way that you are speaking now. And I recall us being together at a conference, I think it was this time last year, um, when for, out of nowhere, the microphone just decided not to work anymore. It had been working all day <laughs> in the particular room. <laughs> and it just decided that it wasn't gonna work anymore. But you went on and you were able to host that breakout session. And yes. no one would have ever believed that prior to you, you wouldn't have been able to do that. And so as I was sitting there watching you, I'm just thinking, God, you are absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So th those valleys are real. They are real. So I, I do want to talk about, um, we've got a little bit more time. I want to talk about back up and talk about your second book, um, which is, and we've, we've touched on it a bit, this whole idea of praying and, and prayer, your second book, prayers, bear food, bear fruit. Um, mm -hmm. 
become a person of prayer. I, I want you to talk about Kathy. Why? Why is it so important for us to become prayers? Um, and not not just as a casual, you know, I pray before my meal, or you know, we pray before we start service. But why is it so important for us to really? almost embody that idea of being a prayer? You know, I want to just relate it to um, any human relationship that we have. Your relationship mm -hmm. with your husband, you know, mm -hmm. my relationship with my husband or my kids, even a relationship with someone, a co-worker or um, a friend. Any relationship, the foundation of that relationship and what's going to make it thrive and and what's going to make it a success is communication. Oh. And so as Christians, we must communicate with God. Prayer is just a simple conversation. It's just talking to God. You know, you're talking to him, but also listening for him to speak back to you. So there's mm -hmm. a time of quietness in that. Without a relationship with him, I mean, we can say, yes, I gave my heart to the Lord. I got saved when I was 10 or I gave my heart to the Lord five years ago. But then I would say, how is your relationship? Do you talk with him daily? Do you listen for his voice? And so I've noticed that there are some, whereas you look at their life and you don't see a lot of fruit. You don't see a lot of great things happening or results, or maybe they may be stuck in this one place for such a long time and you wonder why are they stuck there? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they lack relationship. Maybe mm -hmm. they're not spending time in prayer mm -hmm. because whenever we connect with God in prayer, fruit is going to come forth. Results wow. are going to happen. We're going to see the evidence of our prayer lives all around us. Yeah, we'll see the fruit of it all around us. And so that's why it's so important. That's the way we get to know God. And that's the way we come to know ourselves. It's in the place yeah. of prayer. That is that is so good. And you, it, you actually just said you said the way we get to know God. But then you said the way we get to know ourselves. Um, and I think that I think sometimes that may be the hesitancy that we have is that we may <laughs> we may not want to know. <laughs> Uh, our true selves. Uh, we may not want to, to face it, as I call looking in the mirror, uh, because you're right. When when we really do seek God and we are in relationship and we grow that fellowship um, with him through prayer, we're almost forced to. And and I often say that. So then the decision becomes, OK, now what do we do once we have seen our true selves, what what's now the work that that we're willing to do uh, to grow into the people that he's called us to be. So, yeah, I, I love that. We we see him, but we see us, too. That's yeah. right. And I can well, tell you of the times that I wanted to talk to God about something and he talked to me <laughs> about something else. And I'm like, Lord, I didn't come to you for that today. But he's saying, no, I want to talk to you about this because right. let's get this straightened out before we talk about that. Yes. And really it's a sign of his love. You know that? Because That's if he beautiful. didn't love us, he wouldn't correct us. Correction yeah. is, is the outflow of his love. Absolutely. So God, he won't leave us the same way that he found us. He grows us. Yes. He corrects us. He, he develops us, molds us, and shapes wow. us all in the place of prayer. And thank God he does. Because I'm not the woman that I was, say, 10 years ago. I'm so oh. different. Oh, and and it's because I have learned how to grow spiritually through that yeah. intimate relationship and allowing him to correct me and speak to me and teach me and train me and stretch me and mold me and make me. <laughs> yes, and all of that. And yes. and we are so, yes, we are so grateful that he does love us that much because we think about even with our children, you know, when, when we correct them, it's not because we're trying to hurt them. It's ultimately because we want them to be better and to do better and to learn and, and, and grow and all those things. And God does the exact same thing with us. Yeah. Um, you said you said something in there. Sometimes when we pray about um, a thing, uh, or we start with, with this thing. And as you were talking, I was thinking about or we start praying about a person that we want God to deal with. Yes. And he will frequently <laughs> say, no, 
not not so much let me let me deal with you in in this moment not don't tell me about what they've done or what they haven't done or what they're not doing um let me let me talk to you about you as well again stretching growing molding us all the time wow i love it um i do want to talk about we got a couple minutes but i want you to share um with the folks who are listening um the the other projects, we'll say, that you have going on, and kind of what you do, um, and I, I won't. I'll just, I'll just let you talk. I was going to give a tease, but I won't. Uh, okay. What, what you do, and how you help uh, people who are wanting to get their word out. I'll put it that way. <laughs> well, you know, I just, I feel like I stumbled into a career in the publishing industry, but I know now that it was by divine design that God opened this up to me. So, you know, Prayers Fair Food, when I wrote that book, as soon as it was published, one person after the next began to contact me and say, Kathy, God told me to call you that you would help me get published <laughs> or help me write my book. And I thought, what? And, and that was actually my first book and I didn't have any experience. Everything I learned, I, I learned by way of research and trial and error and all of that. But I was willing to help God's people. It, it's just in my heart to help people. And it's no uh, competition. I am all the way on the sidelines cheering authors on because I know that God is the one that put the message in us to share with the world. And so who am I to be jealous of that or stand in the way? No, I'm going to come alongside the author and say, hey, where are you in the process? And let me let me help you. And so, you know, I'm a publishing consultant. Also, I handle acquisitions for publishers and uh, help authors to just find their pathway to publishing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, I love and, it. and I will say, yeah, and, and I have certainly have to say, um, for those watching, full transparency, uh, Kathy was my publishing consultant, and, and I, it, the process was, um, I could not have done it without her. Um, it was such a joyous process and an easy process because I had someone that I trusted um, and that I knew uh, was going to be cheering me on, but who was also going to be praying with and for me through that process. So, um, and I do think it's interesting, like you said, that you just kind of stumbled upon it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But look at what God has done. Um, and he has certainly blessed you uh, in yes. multiple ways. You've had the opportunity to do some amazing things. And so I, I'm, I'm excited about that for you. So um, you. everyone, we are about out of time. But Kathy, I can't tell you, you know, I love you so very much. Um, and I thank I you just you. for what you mean for what you mean to me and our friendship. And so I'm so excited that you were able to join me, that we had a chance to talk. And I really hope that that those of you who are listening now, who are watching live, those of you who are going to watch later on, um, are, have really been blessed by, by some of what Kathy has shared as we've talked about this whole idea of praying, as we've talked about um, being able to walk through those low places and those valley in our lives, valleys in our lives and, and how we can grow um, in the midst of that and, and really seek God and see what it is that he wants us to do during those times. And so both of her books, again, you can find at her website, kathyargreen.com. Um, so Kathy, I love you. I thank you. I appreciate oh, I you for doing you. this. Thank you. You are more than welcome. And for all of you who are watching, um, listen, thank you uh, for continuing to join us each and every week. We, we really enjoy doing this. And like I said, bringing you just some amazing guests to help um, grow you and and mature you and, and continue to show you the amazing grace of God. Um, so join us next week. Um, Carmen Pate will be back hosting next week and she will be interviewing Justina Page. That's going to be an amazing interview. Please, you don't want to miss it. Uh, Justina has an amazing story. And as you all know, Carmen is a phenomenal host as well. So again, thank you all so much for joining us. Please continue. If you have not liked and followed the Grace Cafe page, do that now. Before you log off, make sure you like and follow so that you'll be notified next week when we come on. And I think I will be back with you guys uh, maybe the week after that. So again, thank you so much. Take care and have a wonderful afternoon.